about today. So I hope you enjoyed and happy new year. That's not what you sounded like on the 31st. I know it was a little bit more enthusiastic than that, but that's okay. Happy New Year. The church calendar, the church New Year actually starts the beginning, usually around the beginning of December, but we can't let this pass by without knowledge. So, Happy New Year to you. It is the second Sunday of Christmas, and we will begin our worship service as we always do, sharing our joys and concerns with one another and then lifting them as a family to God. Thank you. 
Isn't that so too? It's time for the children to come forward. How's everybody? Good! Well, I can't believe you. That is great. Stop. You're going to have to back off just a little bit. How's everybody? Happy New Year. Happy New Year! Did any of you stay up until midnight? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. My house. That's true. You were at my house. Stay up until midnight. Yeah, you were at my house. Yeah, that was really fun, wasn't it? Awesome. 2015. The first mystery box of 2015, and it's Lucy's turn, and let's see what happens. What do we have in here? Oh! This looks like a treasure chest. Let's just shake it so the adults can hear. And there are beautiful beads in here. And money. And there's some dollars in here. Oh my goodness. Wow, look at all that beautiful treasure. Lucy, you should be careful, or otherwise that money might end up disappearing. Is that your favorite one? Yeah. Yeah. What's this? Oh, yeah, that is really beautiful. Everyone can see in there? Hmm, so it's my job to think of something that this reminds me of, this beautiful treasure chest. Hmm. Well, yes, you've seen all of it. So, God talks to us about things that are valuable to us, that are like treasures to us, right? The things that are very most important. And then we need to think about what's most important to us in the world. Because it is so easy to think that this thing right here, this dollar bill, is really kind of the most important thing, right? Like if I can earn some more money, that'll be good. If I have lots of money, I can buy lots of things, right? It's so easy. Yes, but that's exactly what we learn when we read the Bible and we go to Sunday school, is that the most important treasure that we could ever have is our faith in God. And even though these stones are really, really beautiful, because they are, and these dollars are very important because they are, that the most important thing we can have is our faith in God. Because you know what? Are you always going to have money? No. No, the answer is yes. You should say yes, I'm always going to have money. Because I'm teasing you. But you might find yourself with no money one day, right? That's happened to some of the adults in this room, and it's a very scary thing. And you might not have beautiful, shiny things every single day either. But you know what people can never take away from you? Your faith in God. That's part of what makes it so valuable. Is because nobody can take it from you. In fact, it's a gift from God himself. So, that's what this reminds me of. You had your hand up, Calvin. What were you going to say? Do you remember? I already said it. You already said it. Okay, so we need to choose our mystery box person for next month. Me. Uh, no, you just had it. Mm. I really don't know who's next because I forgot to look at my list. That's not good. Um, do you have a sense, Kelly? Do you want to teach it? I don't know which one. Okay. It's going to go home with the lynches, and I will write you to who did the most recent one, because I have notes on who did it most recently. did it! Uh-huh, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to send it home with the lynches, and it will be Lauren teaching. And what about with my stuff? And you need to put a, get a bag or something to put your stuff in. I have a bag. Okay, today you are going to sing songs with Sam. You're going to learn a song Yay! that you will get to sing <laughs> for the church next Sunday, okay? So put that back in there. I want you to find a bag once you leave, and you can put it in the bag once you Daddy can help you, okay? Daddy has a box. Okay, let's hold our hands up here. Lord God, we're thankful that you're the most valuable treasure to us and that our faith in you can never be taken away because it's a gift from you. It will never go away. We thank you for that, and we thank you for these children, and help them to sing with the voices you gave them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, we should give Camille a hand for being the lone member of the choir who showed up in a row. <laughs> Let's read it together. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies. 
to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the seas, all that swim in the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And now please hear the scripture lesson from the book of Revelation. Today's lesson comes from Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 6a. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a beautiful bride dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor mourning, nor crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new, and he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This truly is the word of God. Please pray with me. Lord God, these beautiful words in the scriptures about your vision for the future. They inspire us, God, and we ask that through the power of your spirit, you would help us hear them fresh this morning. Help me to speak and to think clearly. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the theme for this service is New Year's resolutions. And I wonder if you have developed, even in passing, somewhere, one or two things that you would like to do, new, different, fresh, this year for 2015. I want to give you just a little bit of time. You've got an insert in your bulletin which was full of music that we already sang. I left mine somewhere up there. But the music sheet that's in there. I asked my mom if she'd find us a little music, maybe play about 30 seconds of music, and I want you to write down the one or two or three things you may have thought of for New Year's resolutions this year. Jesus. That's 
that's my focus this year. Okay. So making decisions with the question, what would Jesus do? The nice thing last year didn't work out well. <laughs> didn't work out very well. Somebody, I was talking to somebody who said, oh yeah, my New Year's resolution from last year, I'm doing really well. I wanted to lose 10 pounds and I only have 13 more to go. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes they don't work out. Do you love that? Anybody else want to share one? Yeah, Karen. Um, to let go of negative energy and I want to actually read the Bible the whole Okay. So we got another sort of positive attitude win. That's good. And to read the Bible, which is one that Sam and I Oh, that's one of our resolutions. We already didn't read it last night, deeply. <laughs> On the third day, it was so late when we went to bed. We went to bed. Yes. Anybody more vegetables, exercise? Kevin? Uh, better fitness, meditation, and reading. There you go. Yeah. F physical fitness tends to play a big role. Good. Okay, so I want you to hold on to the things you have. And now we're going to jump to the beginning of the sermon. That was just a little activity for fun. So I hope that you had at some point in your life, or maybe you still have, a really great club or team that you have been a part of, maybe with sports, maybe an extracurricular activity. You have a group of people like that, maybe in high school or college, or like now, you know, like sing in the North Reading Community Corral now, that's one. A nice group of people that you go spend time with on a regular basis, and you have this common goal, and you're improving yourself together, and you're working together as a team. There's such wonderful camaraderie and something like that. I want to show you one of my favorite teams that I was ever on, and it's up here. It's a few years ago, just a couple <laughs> years ago. This is my swim team from college. This is all of us sitting in a hot tub together. The person went up on top of the one meter board or the three meter board and to look down to take this picture. And this was a time-honored tradition for my swim team that every year, we, when we went to this one particular swim meet and they had this hot tub, that we would get in the hot tub together. And you know, college kids, they love that, right? <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm there. Well, you see if you can find me. I'm in there. I'm, I'm upside down, like, like this. Yeah, the bottom left. Looking up. Wait, there, yeah, that's right. Back to day. My swim team. Every December, we would go down to Florida for about two weeks for a training trip. And uh, what a wonderful time where we just worked so intensely together down. Uh, we did double practices. And so we worked extremely hard. We played really hard, too, in a very clean sort of way. Played, and so many jokes. We played a lot of cards down there. I would have loved it because we played so many cards down there and had so many in jokes. And you know, I didn't know that happens with a group of people. Just a wonderful time. You can take it down now because I'm feeling embarrassed that I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> um, so I, I love that time because what I realized about swimming for me is not only did it surround me with a good community of people, but the particular exercise of swimming is a very solitary thing. If you're alone when you swim. There may be other people in the pool, but you've got your cap on, you have your goggles on, you put your head in the water, and you're swimming for an hour and a half, according to what the coach tells you to do. And you have, at the bottom of the pool, a nice, solid, thick black line that tells you exactly where to go, and at the end, it has a little cross at the top, I don't know if we have any swimmers in this room, that tells you the wall's coming up, smarty, you better turn around. And you do your turn, and you go back the other way. And all you're doing is going back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, and it's very calm. I love that part of the Florida training trip. There's a nice big 50-meter pool down there outside, back and forth, back and forth. So you can imagine how distressed I was when my coach got the brilliant idea one day that we should do a beach swim instead, because we were in Florida, we're on the east coast of Florida. He says, this morning we're not going to our usual pool, we're going to do an open water swim. And we're going to go to the beach, and you're going to have on some shoes that you know you can get wet, and you're going to run along the beach a certain distance, and you're going to jump into the ocean and swim back, and then come out. And then you can run twice as far on the sand, swim out, uh, go out, and then come back. And now you're going to run three times as far. I was like, I don't like this at all. Like anything about running is not okay with me. And I, especially on sand, it is so hard. And not only that, but once you get into the ocean, I mean, you would think swimming 
to swim in shouldn't be such a big issue. But you get in that ocean, the water is not clear, it tastes extremely salty, it is very choppy with a lot of waves, and most importantly, there is no line at the bottom of the pool. So I don't know where I'm going now. It was one of the most miserable, I mean, you would think, put a swimmer in water, everything should be, if I was, I hated it, we only did it once. I think he heard my objections. Um, so, you know, you're swimming along and you have to pop your head up out of the water. You don't know. And then all of a sudden you're headed out this way. And you put your head down again, pop up over here, right? Zig, zag, zig. I talked to my friend Rob, who is an open water swimmer. He swam around uh, the Statue of Liberty about a year ago. You know Rob Cummins? Did if you know him in North Reading. And he said, oh, Rachel, that's called sighting. Sighting. When you're an open water swimmer, you have to put your head in the water and pop up. And if you're a very experienced swimmer, you can go about 12 strokes before you have to take a sighting. But if you're an inexperienced swimmer, about four strokes. So here we are, down in Florida, popping up like little gophers, spitting salt water out. Who knows what's in the water? I was completely and totally miserable. And this, I'm sharing all of this with you. Because I think it is a metaphor for life. You know, Jesus did this too. He told stories and said, it's a metaphor for life. That when we have that safety of a nice strong line on the bottom of the pool and stable conditions, it's kind of like being a child where so many things are decided for us. There's not too many decisions to make. It's a pretty uh, stable, calm environment. Hopefully, we have this kind of childhood. And all we have to focus on is strength training getting stronger, getting better at the swimming part, at the action. But then you grow up, and Joe, you're right here in the middle of that transition where you're getting sort of launched from the nice, still waters of the indoor pool into the ocean where it be like you, where now you're going to be an adult. And all of a sudden, that predictable boundary and that clear sense of exactly where to go and what to do is gone. And all of a sudden, we're going to have to rely on some other things, our own decisions to do this. I'm telling you this because I thought I would like us to talk about New Year's resolutions today, about how we pop up and take a sense of where we are and where we need to be going and go back down into the daily activity of life. And I looked in the Bible for that kind of thing, for the time when somebody just stands up long enough to make a slight adjustment, a slight correction, and then goes back. And the interesting thing about the stories in the Bible is when you see change in people in the Bible, it's not incremental, almost never incremental. It's usually like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a baby, God got me pregnant. Or like, oh my gosh, God wants me to be king. Or oh my gosh, now I need to lead an army. And it's usually a huge trend. Oh my gosh, everything just changed and now I'm a new person, right? Oh my gosh, now I love Jesus instead of oppressing Jesus, uh, 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 Christian. It's usually a very dramatic shift. There aren't examples that I can think of where it's just incremental. But what I realized is that what becomes important to us as people of faith as we consider a New Year's resolution is that sighting faith that Rob the swimmer told me about. That's sighting. When Rob was swimming around the Statue of Liberty and being an experienced swimmer, I'm sure he was just nice long strokes, you know, every 12 strokes, he slightly glances up to find out he's exactly on course. What's he looking for but the statue? That's what he's choosing as the thing that's giving him his sense of direction. As people of faith, when we do these little check-ins, like we can at New Year's, what am I going to do better this year? What am I going to get rid of this year? It's a little course correction. What are we looking at? And you might say, oh, Jesus. Okay, that's good. That's good. But I believe a full picture of what we use as our mark is the scripture that Bob read to us from the book of Revelation. That is a vision from John of Patmos 
this guy who went out to an island all deserted and had a hallucination of what the end of the world is going to look like, this beautiful <coughs> picture of God coming to live with people again, just like it was in the beginning in Genesis, where God and people live face to face, and there is no sorrow and there is no pain. Now the end of time will look like this, and God will come and live with people and wipe away every tear. What a beautiful scripture that is. That is the vision for where we are headed. That is where the arc of history is going. By faith, that's what we believe. That's where the world is going, is this time where the reign of God is perfect. And so I would suggest to you that if we are doing something like the New Year's resolution, that if we want to do it in a faithful way, with our faith, we can say, how does the thing that I would like to do in my life direct me just a little closer to that coming kingdom of God, to that beautiful place where God and people are living together. I think that most of the things that we put down aren't too far away, because they're usually self-improvement, right? If we make ourselves better, hopefully that's making the world better. But I still want to give you just a little bit of time to think about doing that kind of sighting on a picture of the image in Revelation of the kingdom of God. And to look at these same New Year's resolutions that you just wrote down and think, well, okay, at least the first one I wrote down was Bible reading. That was good. That was kind of religious of me. Excellent. Um, but eating more vegetables is one of them. So how, how is that helping me get towards that vision of the kingdom of God? Taking care of my body is important so that I can work for the kingdom of God, right? That kind of thing. So. We're going to have just another 30 seconds or so. And I want you to take a look at what you wrote down. And see if in the context of your faith and the direction that we are all headed towards that kingdom of God, if you would add or subtract or shape or refine anything that you wrote down. Let's just take a few more minutes, and then, or a few more seconds to do that, and after that, we'll do communion.
hopefully what we find is that it's not just a New Year's resolution for something we want to do with ourselves, but it's us wanting to be part of what God is doing in the world. That is our resolution. <laughs> Uh, as they prepare our dinner. So please do talk to me today or during the week and let me know 
um, if you are coming to the leaders meeting. Also in two weeks, uh, we'll begin a class called The Basics. Um, this is for uh, adults who feel like maybe they're just a little bit rusty on sort of the basic tenets of Christianity because it's been a long time since Sunday school. Um, it's gonna last six weeks. We're going to talk about just the basic teachings and we're gonna take a look at a lot of different Bible uh, verses that uh, support and illustrate those teachings. So that will begin on Sunday the 18th. Are there other announcements? Last week's celebration and thanks was lengthy and extensive. We were exuberant. We were so thankful to so many people. You can see all those um, the thankful people and those who received praise uh, last week for the things that go on at this church to keep it going. Who are we going to thank this week? Gail. I would like to thank Neil for helping out with communion. I wasn't certain I'd be able to be here today and got in very late last night. So I was very thankful. Okay, thanks to Camille for setting up communion this morning. <laughs> Any other celebrations or thanks? All right, we'll take it. I already thank you for showing up for choir. Way to show up, Camille. You are just an example to all of us. We love it. All right. If there's no other announcements, please stand for the benediction. May God, who is the one who has given us a vision for God's kingdom in this world, may God be with us, be in our sights, until we meet again in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.